Thanks for joining everyone. Welcome to the next in our series of Norton Expert Interviews. In a typical year, we would have been talking to our customers and our industry partners in person at IMTS, but this year is obviously a little different. So instead, we're going to do things virtually and give everyone on the outside a chance to hear uh, what Norton thinks about what's happening in the industry and also hear about a bit about our newest products. Um, so in this session, we're going to be focusing on the automotive industry. And because that's a pretty broad topic, we're going to try to be uh, more specific talking about engine components. Um, so to kick things off, I'm going to quickly introduce all of our experts product management and product engineering groups. We have Bill Lane, Jeff Holland, Andy Schock, Kelly Pika, Ann Bonner, and Ryan Ellingworth. And from the application engineering team, we have Dave Getz and Augusto Narus. Thank you, everybody, and welcome. So I will kick things off with a very broad question, um, and I'm going to leave it to the application engineering team to answer this one. What are some of the key trends you're seeing in the automotive industry today? Hi, Jamie. Uh, let me open the conversation by saying that um, the auto industry has been experiencing a, a lot of trends, uh, big trends. Uh, actually, there are some of them that are not completely related to our industry, but I think it's worth it to mention them. Like, for example, two of them, right? Um, uh, some of the recent ones have been the autonomous driving uh, and the other one, the online experience due to COVID-19. Uh, many people feel safer, you know, uh, buying cars, via online and then getting those cars delivered uh, and because all these programs are very flexible you know you can even return those those cars so uh, i think those are some of the big trends you know uh, that we've been seeing the ones that actually uh, are more related you know have more impact to our industry are for example uh, the lighter parts or materials uh, the gas consumption the hybridization and then the electrification Actually, let me start with the lighter materials. This is not something new that we have been seeing, something actually that automakers have as a target, as a goal every year for the past, I want to say, a couple of decades, right? And you can see that when you compare a brand new car coming out of the dealership versus the same car, same model, you know, 20 years ago, or maybe 30 years ago, uh, you know that, you know, the old car is going to be much heavier, you know, and then the new one is going to be much lighter. Uh, that also actually goes related with the fuel economy. And actually, many of these trends are some way, you know, interrelated, you know, one to each other, not all of them, you know. But for example, uh, jumping into the fuel economy, uh, this could be also due to uh, emissions uh, and also uh, the automakers are trying to come up with engines that are smaller, lighter and more powerful. And then they're achieving that by, for example, there are some automakers that when you see the camshaft, right, uh, they used to be just a casting camshaft, which is, you know, a solid steel. But some of the automakers are coming up with a hollow camshaft that basically what they do, they assemble the camshaft by having the cam lobes, you know, a slide into a hollow tube and also the the pump lobe, and then once you have all the cam, you have the I'm sorry, once you have all the lobes inserted, you know you have the camshaft which is much lighter and that gets translated in a much efficient you know engine because it's lighter, right? Uh, the other way or the other trend that we've been seeing uh, and getting very popular are our makers are trying to downsize the engine size. Uh, meaning that, you know, even for SUVs, you know, that are mid-size, you're, you're seeing more and more uh, engines that are just uh, four cylinder. And how do they get more power of that engine? Well, they, they use the, the turbo, the turbocharged engines, right, just to try to get more juice out of that engine. Um, and then after that, we have uh, the next uh, trend. Actually, this is the most recent one and, and, and one of the biggest ones, which is the hybridization. And then from there, you know, jump to the electrification of the, the cars. And actually, I'm going to let Dave talk a little more about it because he's the, the expert. But what I want to say here is that uh, this is actually a, a big trend because uh, all the or makers, at least the big ones, have at least a hybrid cars or electric cars. Yeah, like Augusto said, the big move seems to be to, towards electrification. And to, to do that, you know, weight is a, is a big consideration. So we're, we're finding that uh, engine components are being made with lighter, stronger, more durable materials. Uh, so some of the crossover from where we would see like an, an aerospace product starting to be 
introduced into automotive applications. Um, and as Augusto said, the, the smaller smaller engines with turbocharging, and it's just, uh, like I said, the, the move to electrify and higher fuel economy seems to be the big, big move right now. We see our customers, you know, having a need for tighter profile tolerances uh, and just basically higher precision across the board for some of these projects. So one another trend we see at our automaker uh, customers is the the investment in quality inspection uh, processes. So a big part of what we do is having to align with our customers' inspection processes to meet their their updated demands to meet these market trends too. Thank you both. Um, uh, do you want to elaborate a little bit on um, what you think our customers are asking for? Is there anything specific we're seeing our customers asking for right now? Well, to, to go with what Ryan was saying, I mean, in order to make things more precise, you have to be able to measure it. You have to be able to, to, to make it. So we're, we're finding that the tolerances we're being held to uh, post grind now are much tighter and smaller than they used to be, where we would rely on you know fairly fairly generous grind tolerances and then get it through super finishing or, or lapping at the end, the the post grind requirements are a lot tighter. Uh, we're looking for products that are offering process improvements as far as not just longer lasting product, but you know cycle time reduction so you can get more parts quicker and then couple with that ultimately more parts per, per wheel, more parts per product. Um, we're, we're looking at the whole system a lot more than I think we used to in the past. And just to add to Dave's point, you know, some customers are also, he said, uh, getting more tight, you know, in terms of tolerance, you know, uh, trying to eliminate, you know, extra steps. So after grinding, for example, there's nothing else, you know, and before there used to be uh, some type of polishing or lapping process. And now, you know, after the, the last grinding process, that's basically the end of the grinding, you know, or uh, processes using uh, abrasive products. Great, thank you. Um, what about future? What do we see for the future in the automotive space? Well, I, I think that trend's going to continue. They're going to try to do make more durable, make them last longer, stronger, lighter. Um, we're going to electrify more, so you're going to start seeing uh, probably smaller internal combustion engines, more use of turbo. Um, as fuel cells come on board, it, it's going to be a whole different engine from what we uh, would normally think of it today. I would just like to add something to that, to the, um, you know, smaller, faster, um, you know, don't forget about transmissions, gears. Uh, automakers now have, have uh, they've added many more gears into their transmission. They're also, they're also looking at noise reduction. Um, and which all means tighter tolerances uh, that are demanded from our product. I think um, one more trend that we do see in the industry is, you know, of course, industry 4.0. You know, automotive customers are looking specifically to take advantage of the benefits of industry 4.0 because, it, you know, in the, the volumes that they're making parts, you know, a half a second in a cycle time really does impact these guys more than maybe other industries does. So you'll start to see them look, uh, working with OEMs to get more data out of their processes. And then for us, you'll start to see us offering more connected products that can be a part of that whole system too um, for recording and interpretation of data on the shop floor. And one, one nice addition to that too is I know it seems that uh, we as a corporate are being pulled in more on the front end when the new products are coming on and new engine programs and, and new transmission components they're they're involving our application and our product engineering team more on the front end allowing us to be proactive in the design of the system rather than having you know augusto or myself go and and retroactively modify and change and improve existing processes mm -hmm. it's still a big thing that we do but i think that our, our technology and our skills and ability are being recognized a lot more and, and we're helping on the front end now too that's true because our, our automotive uh, customers, they want a turnkey process. So the OEMs today uh, are able to offer that and then they work with the abrasive suppliers up front like us so that uh, they can go right into production. 
And to Ryan's point, uh, going back to the industry 4.0, um, a customer is not only trying to optimize their process, but also eliminate a, a defective product, right? Uh, when the machine knows that something is wrong, it stops. So it, you, you don't actually produce something that is bad. You can stop it right there and still adjust, you know, and then uh, come up with a good product. So speaking of products, um, let's talk a little bit about the the offerings we have for the automotive market. Um, and I think we can start maybe with uh, super abrasives. So Bill, um, you have a new product within your portfolio. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That was a great segue in. Um, so I just wanted to introduce um, Vitron 7. It was a product that we launched in 2018 at IMTS. Over the last two years, we've seen it grow. Um, we've seen it um, a lot more interest from our automotive customers. We're seeing the benefits of the cooler grinding, low, lower power draw, but yet higher wheel life, more parts between dress, which is what these guys talked about earlier with lowering the customer's CPU. That's very important to, to, um, to all our customers. And a, instead of, um, and we're showing the value of the total reducing the total cost with this new product and uh, we're very excited of in in where it's gone we're seeing it used in cam in crank manufacturing and we're also expanding it to id grinding and automotive components so it's it's been a a, a good growth opportunity for us and we're excited to demonstrate to customers how it how it performs in the field yeah, that's a great new product for us. Um, and then within Super Abrasive, we also have um, some fine grinding wheels. Uh, Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the the fine grinding wheels in your portfolio? Sure, Jamie. Um, so so here here at Norton, we have a full line of GPK, or that's grinding with planetary kinematics or fine grinding wheels. Uh, we offer we offer multiple bonds bond platforms, uh, resin bonded vitrified, bonded, or metal bonded. Um, for those of you who don't know GPK or fine grinding, um, it's very similar to double disc grinding, but the, the, uh, the customer's parts are moved through the grinding process in a planetary motion. Um, these type of machines allow customers to hold very, very tight parallelism tolerances, very, very tight finish tolerances, and they can be very, very productive, especially if they're automated. This, these, these types of machines. Um, we support we support all the major all the major OEMs who make uh, GPK machines. Uh, we we service multiple in industries: uh, powdered metal, bearing, aerospace, uh, everything from cast iron to high 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 value ceramics. Um, here, you know, here, here at Norton, we have a, we have a second to none wheel construction and all of our bond platforms are very, very, um, they're very, very productive, very, very, they're market leaders, I guess, to sum it up. Um, and that's both, um, available in diamond and CBN. Yes. Uh, all, all bond platforms are, uh, are available in both. Um, so typical sizing, you know, maybe 220 grit down to, five, uh, could be even finer down into the micron sizes, uh, wheel, wheel sizes up to 1500 millimeter in diameter, hexagonal construction, round construction, customized for the customer for their particular process. Great, thank you. And uh, I know we have a new flyer that's going to be launched or that we'll be coming out with on those wheels shortly. Correct. Thank you, Jamie. Yep. Um, so another product within our super, super abrasive portfolio, um, which is brand new. Um, Andy, can you talk a little bit more about the Aon product, which we just launched? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so we have a new uh, Aon product that's A-E-O-N is how you spell that. Um, it's, it's our newest high precision electroplated uh, grinding tool um, and it's seen a lot of utility in the uh, automotive market specifically 
And it's it's designed really from the, the bottom up. We, we implemented a lot of new um, manufacturing processes to, to accomplish this extremely high precision tool. So we're holding five, mi five micron profile tolerances, very tight run out and balance requirements um, on, on some pretty large wheels. Um, and so, so these are single layer products that um, can be replated, uh, you know, several times, and they're used, or they've seen they've seen uh, application grinding gear shafts for for groove grinding, um, crank shafts, centerless grinding is is possible with these. Uh, we've done some groove grinding for like um, locking rings and in, in turbochargers. OD profile grinding, uh, also um, even on on valves like the head, neck, and seat, and profile grinding on valves as well. And um, so, so between all that, we feel that we have a technology that's extremely competitive, um, and it's it's on it's on a lot of new machines that are are have been designed by several European OEMs, um, and they they are also geared mainly at the automotive industry. So. They have special machines that are designed to hold um, and utilize uh, these single layer products, um, which which give a, a you know great point to point accuracy, um, where a single layer product may have several different um, portions on that gear shaft or crankshaft it's grinding at the same time. Um, so you're 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 um, you, you have you have. Uh, also, the advantage of a very long tool life with this, and and it's extremely competitive with uh, with other wheels on the market. All right. So, Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, conventional bonded products we offer for the automotive market? Um, sure. Yeah, we have a full line of bonded products um, for a lot of different applications within uh, the automotive market. Um, one. A uh, new line that we're very excited about is our new line of inserted nut disc wheels, um, Stellar. And with the Stellar line of products, we've optimized both the product and our internal process for making the wheels to give the best in product performance and consistency. Um, so within the Stellar line, we offer a wide range of bonds, abrasive blends, um, and grit sizes to really be able to engineer the product to our customers' application needs and to help them meet their goals, whether that's um, increased abrasive life with less wheel changes, uh, faster cycle time with faster metal removal rates, uh, the ability to grind new materials, um, cutting down on their rejection rate, um, improving finish on their parts, or whatever their goals may be. In addition to the inserted nut uh, disc line, the Stellar line, we also have uh, several new centerless products, mm -hmm. um, one of which is the Century 45 or B45 resin bonded product for through feed centerless grinding. And with Century 45, it was really designed for long, uh, giving long wheel life while also providing a freer or easier grinding. And by that, I mean the product draws less power. It actually grinds cooler and quieter than most traditional um, centerless wheels. It's less likely to chatter. And it's also able to remove material more quickly for faster cycle times for our customers. Uh, and also, it's very versatile. We can use it on a variety of different parts and different materials. Great, thank you. Um, so obviously we talked about super abrasive and bonded products, um, but we certainly have a full line of dressing products as well that go along with those and many of those. Um, Ryan, can you tell us a little bit about the products that you would recommend in the automotive space for, for dressing those? Sure, um, and like you said, you know, in the automotive component manufacturing market, there's a very big breadth of applications. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, we have three different areas of dressing tools that we offer. I'll start with the first one being stationary tools. Um, I'll start with that one because we have some open capacity today at the plant. We have a very experienced manufacturing team. We can get tools uh, and samples to the customers quickly. Um, so I want to just point that out. But with stationary tools, you have the most flexibility in the application. Um, it is the cheapest initial cost of tooling. And where Norton has done well in the past is I think we've had the best engineered offering um, when we really look at the application and the wheel itself along with the whole system. Um, but something that's a little bit newer to us, um, we're competing more in the opening price point type of market today. So we know we have customers that value that, you know, um, low price out of the box, um, some throwaway tools. Um, so we do have that that offering now. Um, and also to go along with Kelly's um, Kelly Pika's Stellar offering in the bonded world, we have some tools that were specifically selected to go along with dressing that Stellar product. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty much what's going on in stationary tools. 
the second area would be traverse dressing. Um, again, that's an area where a lot of flexibility for customers, so it's very prevalent in automotive component manufacturing. Um, the first most important thing would be uh, what the industry calls uh, pizza cutters or infiltrated CNC profiling discs. So we have um, we have a very good product there, and that's actually a new product um, that's been with us for about a year and a half now. It's a um, HD. We have a higher quality of diamond that we use now, and it's led to about 30% uh, increase in the performance of the product. Mm -hmm. um, so that's necessary, especially when customers are upgrading to more ceramic blends uh, and wheels that are more taxing on, on the, the dressing. Um, for dressing of super abrasives, we have a tiered offering from Metal Bond to our Braze Profile Roller. Um, and that's pretty much what's what we have for traverse dressing. You know, it's a full range depending on what we are dressing. And then the third area for dressing product is form rolls. So as you know, we have uh, two main technologies, reverse plated and infiltrated, uh, multiple manufacturing sites available for those. Um, so what we do there is we really want to understand the failure mode or the limitations of the current, um, the current product in the process. And we can enhance uh, the life of the tooling or, or the quality of the part a couple of different ways. We'll look at CVD reinforcement, uh, we'll look at grit changes and concentrations and patterns. Uh, and then we can actually even look at the design and how that's worn over time and make design um, you know, recommendations. So that's that's kind of a differentiator for us. Um, one more important trend, I think, is really in, as we see a lot more uh, vitrified CBN in the automotive market uh, is exposure on reverse plated diamond rolls. So Bill talked about his Vitron product. Um, make sure you ask for E-Form. Um, that's a, an exposed uh, diamond product that we have, and it pairs up well with all CBN. So in CBN dressing, uh, the life of the diamond tool is directly related to form tolerance and exposure of that diamond grid. So uh, we shoot for more exposure to help lengthen the life of that tool. It also helps for a free cutting grind as well. So that's pretty much it. We've got a lot Thanks, going Ryan. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, we want to switch gears a little bit. We talked about super abrasives bonded, but Norton also has a very uh, broad line of coated products. Um, and we have some coated products that um, that work in this space as well in the automotive space. Um, so, Anne, can you talk a little bit and tell us a little bit about your film offering? Sure. Yeah. Um, Finium film is our main offering for automotive powertrain components, and the finishing of those components. Uh, offered in a wide variety of grit ranges to be able to cover the different applications and the different finish requirements that we see from various customers. And this product has um, a patented high performance resin system that allows us to hold on to the abrasive well, and that eliminates the random scratching and, and really allows uh, achieving superior surface finishes. Let me try again. Um, and so, so we also have another new product that you launched recently, which is a very unique product. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the fixed abrasive buff? Absolutely. Yeah, we're very excited about this product. So this is uh, not really for the powertrain components, but more other automotive components such as running boards, um, bumpers, steering column components, um, those sort of applications. And this is really uh, new to the buffing world. So it's focused on cut buffing operations. And what we've done in our new product is we've taken the buff and impregnated the abrasive grain on the surface of the cloth and, it, and adhere that with a resin layer so that the majority of the um, abrasive that you need is right there on the buff. And that allows minimization of the amount of compound that is used um, during the process to polish. And that um, reduces cost of compound, of course, uh, reduces the mess that's made in a buffing process, um, the cleanup times associated with that, and also prolongs the life of the buff. So altogether, it's a, a more efficient, more productive process. And um, we've seen great results in some of those application areas I called out. So there's applications outside of automotive then too? As well, absolutely, yes. So yeah. at pretty much any buffing application? Any cut buffing application, this is an interesting fit for. Good, that's exciting. Um, so I'm gonna throw it back to Dave and Augusto. Um, if you could just, you know, wrap up with, um, you know, this is a very, you know, uh, this is a great team of, of experts we have here. Um, what would we wanna leave our customers with? What would we wanna tell them as far as how our application engineering team can help our customers going forward? <laughs> One of the things that I would like to add to the conversation is not only um, the support that Norton St. Gobain can give you with the AE team, it's also about all the product line that we already uh, spoke about. And uh, one important thing that I would like to mention is that St. Gobain has the product and the solution for your process. 
uh, no matter how difficult, no matter how complicated or how easy. If it's easy, of course, you know, it will, uh, anybody could do it, but uh, complicated, you know, uh, challenging. I think we have the product, we have the people to bring the, the abrasive a solution that you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I've been with Saint Cobain for just about 18 years now, out, out in the field and seen a lot of products launch. And it's it's great that we're constantly bringing new technologies to the field. And what's even better is a lot of these ones. You know, it's I've I've tested them firsthand and would actually say that you know what it's it's superior in a lot of ways, not to you know our, to our competitors and to, to our own product. So it's great to stand behind that. We we've developed tools ourselves with the, the current COVID situation to be able to assist remotely. Uh, our team is is open to travel and is allowed on site as long as the customer is willing to see us. Uh, the benefit we have right now is we have engineering resources in Canada as well as in, in the US. Um, so I mean between the, the AE team, the applications team and our product team, you know, I, I think we have the strongest uh, support and technology network uh, of any manufacturer. Well said, Dave. Well said. In Mexico. <laughs> Very active in Mexico. Yes. Yeah, in Mexico too. Thank you everybody for your time today. We covered a lot um, and this was a broad topic and Norton, Norton certainly offers a lot of products for our automotive customers. So it was a good to hear a little bit more about them, especially our newer products. Um, I know we're all looking forward to getting back to IMTS in person in 2022. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Thank you.